Okay, enough learning new stuff for now. Let's wrap up a whole bunch of interesting little tidbits which uh, you should know by now before moving on any further. Number one, and this is very important, it could be that by the time you watch this video I have already fixed this problem, but if not, so here's the thing. Throughout many of my videos, my previous videos, I've tried explaining everything as simple and as newbie friendly as possible, but as a consequence, many of the terms that I used and some of the stuff that I said turns out to be a little bit and sometimes a lot uh, different than the truth. For example, I've been calling this uh, program over here Microsoft Visual Studio, I've been calling it a compiler. Now while it's true that many times many people call this sort of program a compiler and the truth is that the whole point of programming C++ over here is ultimately to compile your program and then run it but actually this program over here is not at all a compiler what this program is it's called a IDE uh, which stands for integrated development environment which basically is a very nice program with a easy to use uh, graphical user interface which of course also has in the background a C++ compiler which it uses when you're actually trying to run trying to compile the program a compiler in and of itself would probably be just some sort of .exe file which uh, has no graphical user interface like this and would just take a whole bunch of files and compile them together into a program so right now I'm going to mention a few of these uh, little mistakes and hopefully there will be no damage done Okay, so first of all, what I just said, this is just a, a fancy program called a IDE, which means that uh, it's not just a compiler, it has an integrated development environment, which makes things a lot easier. Like, it shows me all of my program files right over here, my header files and my source files, and over here I have my text editor, and over here I have a whole bunch of tools that I can use when I'm making my C++ code and stuff like that. So this is all a very nice environment, which uh, makes programming easy, but this isn't a compiler, this is just a IDE. The compiler is uh, the little piece of program that works in the background when I am actually uh, compiling my program, as you see right over here. The next thing is what exactly include does. So like I, ex I explained in the last uh, rap video, there are a few steps in the compiling of C++ code. The first step is the preprocessor. That's not the compiler, that's just a uh, first step before compiling is this little thing called the preprocessor which goes through all of your .cpp files and will execute all of the commands that begin with the pound signal, the pound symbol. Any line that begins with pound will probably be checked by the preprocessor as a preprocessor command wherever it may be. Even if I have a include statement right over here at the end, even though it doesn't do anything, or in middle of the program or whatever, that will be a preprocessor command. The include command, which is actually called a preprocessor directive, it's a sort of instruction you give the preprocessor, uh, what this does is it tells the compiler to open up this other file and just copy all of the text that's over there, just as plain old text, and just paste it right inside over here. So it's as if, like over here, if I include solder.h, so the preprocessor will take this line of code out and it will paste anything that's inside solder.h, it will paste it right over here. So right now it's like our .cpp file has the entire .h file typed right inside of it. The preprocessor doesn't care if the .h file, if the header file, uh, has valid C++ code in it or if it has just a whole jumble of text. Whatever is in that other file, the preprocessor will just copy that and paste it right over here and that's it. Once the preprocessor finished doing all of its rounds through all of the files and uh, executing all of the 
pound commands, then it's probably the turn for the compiler to begin compiling. And the compiler will be the one who's going to check if everything is valid C++ code and if everything makes sense according to the C++ rules. Okay, another thing I said in previous videos is that in C++ you have the power to create your own keywords which uh, do special stuff like C out or C in or things like that. Well, the truth is that the word keyword is usually only used for the very essential basic C++ keywords like using uh, namespace, int, uh, char, return, if, else, while, stuff like that. The very basic keywords of C++. It happens to be that C in and C out is not a basic C++ keyword. It is a uh, object, a class, which the standard library defines and later on we use. So C out is really an object and C in is also an object. It is not a keyword and uh, whenever you create some of your own functions and some of your own objects again that uh, that's not uh, keywords that you're creating you are creating just useful objects and useful functions which probably essentially are based on very very basic C++ keywords such as integer, void, uh, stuff like that. In my IDE, in my integrated development environment most of these C++ keywords are highlighted in blue, as I mentioned in a different video. So as you can see, the blue words are probably very basic C++ keywords, like class, uh, public, int, void, stuff like that. And as you see, C out and C in are not basic C++ keywords, they are just objects which are created by the standard library. So I apologize if any of these mistakes qu have caused you any confusion. Like in a certain video I said that include will compile the file when really it doesn't compile it. As I just said, it just copies all the stuff right over here. And if there's any such mistakes that you uh, notice in any of my videos, please go ahead and comment. And hopefully I'll fix it up in a later video and eventually fix the original video with the mistake. Having said that, let's learn something very interesting in C++ and that is the possibility to comment uh, stuff that you code. Of course in programming you don't just like type up all of your code and then that's it, it works and you never look at it again. You're going to be revisiting your code every once in a while and probably fix something up and make things a little bit better and make it work faster or whatever. And of course, if the first time you typed it up there was a bug or something, then of course you're going to have to come back and fix up your bugs. And someday it might not even be you that's coming back to see the bugs or whatever. It might be a different programmer from your company that's going to have a look at the code that you typed and try to make sense out of it. So besides for spacing out the lines and making explicit nice variable names and stuff like that, another way to make your code readable and clean is by adding useful little comments that explain what's going on. One type of comment is with two forward slashes and in C++ whenever the compiler sees two forward slashes it will ignore whatever you typed after those forward slashes until the end of that particular line. So over the here this is executed but from this point on nothing is executed until next line, which happens to be blank over here. And the other type of comment begins with a forward slash and an asterisk and ends with the opposite, an asterisk and then a forward slash. And this type of comment can spread across however many lines you'd like. So try to use comments every now and then in your code, uh, actually as much as possible, to explain a little more what's going on. Sometimes it's not so clear what's happening over there. Uh, this line for example is pretty clear so commenting over here is a little extra but later on when your code gets more complicated that's when explaining what your code does will be really useful. And you'll be surprised when you look back at your code a month after you coded it chances are you'll barely recognize what you coded 
and you'll thank yourself for uh, leaving comments behind so you have a little hint of what's going on.